Hi everybody, this is going to be a quick review and overview of the V60 mechanical keyboard. This is with the Cherry MX Green switches. So without further ado, we'll get things started. So uh, as you can see, this is a very small keyboard. It's V60 because I'm pretty sure um, it's named after it being a 60% keyboard, that being 60% of the standard size of a keyboard. So it doesn't have its own section for the number pad, and neither does it have the up, down, left, right arrow keys. All of them are put onto other keys on the keyboard and are accessed via the function key. Same thing goes with F1, F2 through you know F12. All of those are going to be under one numbers one through zero and then minus and plus. You access those with the function key. So you've got the arrow keys on the left and you have it on the right side as you just saw. gives you access to however your finger positions are best used for the moment. And this is a backlit keyboard. Depending on the time that you got it, it comes in different colors. So when I purchased this, it came with red and blue, and it has six brightness levels. And then one breathe mode is the last one. And this is, again, you hold down the function key, you just tap your brightness up or down, uh, switch it from blue to red, vice versa back and forth. Blue is very bright. I usually have it set to red um, as it does match my wrist rest more. My wrist rest is red. Wrist rest is red. Red, red, red. Okay anyways on the back here we have our dip switches and these are for uh, adjusting our keyboard layout. That does come with some alternate keys for your shift, uh, control, super key, alt key on the left and right side so you can adjust those to say maybe you want to have the function key on the left or maybe you want to have it on the right it's up to you. It also gives you an alternate escape key so you can adjust it and make sure that it still resembles how it should be. Um, the, if, you, if you pressed shift and escape with my current layout you're not going to uh, have the same thing if you switch the or if you keep the dip switch on standard. In the box you get a very, very simple manual. It is a single sheet of paper folded that shows you the layout and gives you all of your options for adjusting the dip switches, what each of the layouts do and mean, um, you know, so it just explains what each of the function buttons does. Each of the ports, that's just referring to the different dip switches, and if you look at them very, very closely, you can see that they are numbered. So there's no mixing those up. Overall, I would say this is a very good keyboard. It wasn't the most expensive. There are more expensive Cherry MX green switches, um, but it does kind of feel like you're paying more for less for the size factor. So for some people, if number pad is very important, you're doing a lot of number crunching, I would not recommend this keyboard. Uh, it can get kind of annoying to have to type across the top key as well as using the, the function line. Uh, as for the size, it's very portable, so that's a bonus. Uh, it is very loud though, so I'll just throw in an audio sample of the uh, typing here from my mic. Let me open up a page here so you're, I'm not just destroying my Windows machine here. So this is with the mic just a couple of uh, inches away, maybe about six inches. Uh, it's very loud and you can hear each click. Now, this is a clicky keyboard and a tactile keyboard, so when you press it down you feel a bump and it clicks. So this would be my regular typing speed. So imagine you're playing a game where somebody is typing like that, uh, just with WASD, just back and forth, going, 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 you can hardly hear them, it's going to get pretty obnoxious, right? I wouldn't recommend this for any kind of uh, Let's Plays, live stream stuff, unless you're using a headset mic that's going to you know, focus more on your voice and you're not going to hear anything else in the room. But if you're using a, stu a studio mic, 
Uh, you might want to go with a cherry MX Brown uh, clear. I think the blacks are also, uh, they're just tactile. Actually, no, I think they're not even tactile. Um, you'd have to look into that, and I would recommend you do if noise is a concern for you because these are loud, and if you're going into a typing spree and you're just click, 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 it, it can make a racket. Think of a typewriter. That's how loud this thing is. But I like it that way. I really like the satisfying click. They're very hard to press compared to um, browns. I think it's twice the uh, pressure required in grams um, to depress. Just nice for me. I type really hard and heavy. Some people, they like to kind of flutter their fingers over the keyboard. Really nice and fanciful. I don't know. I, I just don't do that. I'm just pow, 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 pow. So I like it. Teach their own. I think if you uh, are torn between getting one of these and another type of switch, buy a sample. They offer those all the time. I think Mass Drop usually carries one. Um, and I'll show you the different types. It'll get you an idea of how they feel, how they sound, and you can pick the best one that suits your needs. Thank you very much for the review. I or Thank you very much for listening. I would give this keyboard a 9 out of 10. Um, the only point off I would take is that the escape key uh, is just a little bit annoying having three things um, on it as function keys and the regular escape key. It's a little annoying. That's my only gripe. Other than that, very excellent keyboard, lightweight, portable, very comfortable to type with, very sturdy, sturdy butt light. Well done.